Defend Your Head is driven to make football safer. Their new soft shell helmet technology has been designed to form fit the outer shells of current helmets. And scientific testing shows it's effective in reducing blunt force trauma. The company's patented helmet cover is called the ProTech. It is the first device permitted for practice and game use. Several Division I and top high school programs throughout the country are already seeing the benefits of the ProTech. For more information, visit DefendYourHead.com. mission to make the game safer. If we can create an environment through our product and our technology where kids can go out and maximize all the benefits of the game and reduce the risk of any form of injury, that's a worthy mission. So every decision that we make revolves around, is this the right thing? Is this the right thing for the kids? Will this make the game better? Will this make the game safer? At Penn State University, extensive research is being internally funded to specifically focus on sports-related concussions. In 2015, Penn State teamed up with Head Health Network and in 2016 with ProTech Helmet Caps. Madeline Scaramuzzo and the athletic training staff monitored the impacts and collect valuable data from every practice and game day. The athletic training staff and researchers analyzed the data and have noticed a dramatic decrease in higher intensity submaximal impacts. For 25G hits, a daily average per player would get six hits in 2015. In 2017, we can come down and see that on a daily average per player, they're only receiving three hits in the 25G category. So we dropped the hits by half. We want to do the most we can to help our student athletes, and it's not just while they're here, it's for the future and we're gonna to try to lessen the impact that our kids are getting to their heads as much as we possibly can. I'm Glenn Tilly, Executive Chairman of Defend Your Head. We are proud to have come together to create a product that we call ProTech. The ProTech is uniquely designed, half inch thick, specially formulated polyurethane cover that is designed to mimic any shape of any helmet. It will absorb and dissipate the impact whenever it occurs around the circumference of the helmet. Well, I think ProTech's a great product. The number one thing we all try to do in this coaching profession is protect our student athletes. The reason St. Agnes chose this product is because with concussions as prevalent as they are in sports, we wanted to get the top of the line product, and ProTech is that, is that product. The ProTech has a slippier surface that make helmet to helmet collisions more glancing. It features a unique attachment system that not only secures the product safely to the helmet, but guides impact forces away from the helmet. So our players are wearing it um, during practice throughout the year, and then we do because of the easy uh, installments that, that you guys now have on, on the helmet, we do take them off for game day, but uh, we, we're going to wear them throughout the year during practice. The big thing is with the offensive and defensive linemen. Uh, our trainer met with me after one of the practices and he said the most impressive thing is with the constant contact that happens at each snap of the ball, he, he did not hear one helmet clang together. Because of the cushion of it, it allowed, even though there was contact, there wasn't that severe constant pounding contact. Our players don't have those smaller headaches that you normally have um, coming out of any practice where there's a lot of you know, what we call live periods, physical periods during that practice. No question it works or we wouldn't uh, be wearing it. Extensive field and lab testing has exposed the ProTech to both the low and high impact forces associated with football. Lab testing has measured ProTech's ability to dissipate impact forces, while field testing has illustrated the product's ability to reduce headaches and other types of head trauma. Based on my experience, I think that the biggest impact is going to be with our linemen. When we look at the, the number of uh, sub-concussive hits that are repeated day in and day out in practice and in games. I know our numbers have gone down since wearing ProTech. A lot of that I think we're practicing smarter, uh, but I also attribute some of it to wearing ProTech and helping just reduce the number of concussions that we've had. Absolutely wonderful feedback from the parents. 
uh, completely embrace. In fact, a lot of the parents, as distant as they can be, were not really aware that the kids had them. When they came down, they were awestruck by how they looked seamless, regular helmets, and had uh, just fell in love with the caps. I was excited that the team was bringing something to our boys to make them feel safe right from the get-go so that any protection that we can have on their head, it seems like every sport these days is so physical. Every day we hear from more and more players, teams, coaches, league officials and parents who recognize the safety attributes of the ProTech. We hope you'll join our team so that your players can play safe, play right and play on. New this morning on Local 6 Today, it's fun to watch, host the parties, and enjoy all the game day foods. But when you're watching the Super Bowl, do you ever think about the dangers of the actual game? It is a dangerous, rough sport. Despite all the protective gear they wear, concussions are a serious problem for players on the field. We want to talk about a condition, too, called chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. It's a degenerative disease of the brain. It's associated with repeated head traumas like concussions. Here's a list of NFL players diagnosed with CTE, but not until after they died. Former Pittsburgh Steelers center Mike Webster was the first American football player diagnosed with CTE. He committed suicide at the age of 50, and that's because severe depression is one of those things that is associated with CTE. Yeah, Andre Waters, Terry Long, both committed suicide. Doctors diagnosed them with CTE after death. Probably more recently, Chicago Bears defensive back Dave Duerson, he committed suicide and also got a CTE diagnosis afterwards as well. These stories and other statistics about concussions and brain injuries on the football field are the inspiration behind a new helmet technology. It's a soft shell technology to form fit the outer shell of most helmets. It's designed to absorb and to slow the transfer of energy triggered by blows to the head. A former NFL offensive lineman sat down with a neuropathologist to discuss the new technology, but they say keeping players safe goes far beyond just products. Educating players and coaches and parents team managers about concussions, recognizing signs and symptoms so that we can get players who are injured off the field to rest and recover mm -hmm. before they return to play. We know that is protective. The playing surfaces are safer. Uh, certainly the equipment uh, has evolved and is so dramatically safer than uh, you know what was available during my time. And according to the Mayo Clinic, no one should play or do any vigorous activity while any signs or symptoms of concussion are still present. And athletes should not return to their sport until a doctor says it's okay. And that goes for athletes of any age, our kids who are on the yeah. playing field. And I actually talked to both of them. A satellite interview it was very interesting. and It's so random. John Roman had a concussion or two maybe and, and has been like a financial advisor. His mind's sharp and clear. Other players have all sorts of problems afterwards and seeing, it just seems to be a randomness too that they can't Maybe it's just out. where you're hit. It could be. And which, what part of your brain was affected. At Penn State University, extensive research is being internally funded to specifically focus on sports-related concussions. In 2015, Penn State teamed up with Head Health Network and in 2016 with ProTech Helmet Caps. Madeline Scaramuzzo and the athletic training staff monitored the impacts and collect valuable data from every practice and game day. The athletic training staff and researchers analyzed the data and have noticed a dramatic decrease in higher intensity submaximal impacts. For 25G hits, a daily average per player would get six hits in 2015. In 2017, we can come down and see that on a daily average per player, they're only receiving three hits in the 25G category. So we dropped the hits by half. 
We want to do the most we can to help our student athletes and it's not just while they're here, it's for the future and we're going to try to lessen the impact that our kids are getting to their heads as much as we possibly can. Well, I think ProTech's a, a great product. The number one thing we all try to do in this coaching profession is protect our student athletes as well as we possibly can. And anything you can do to protect your student athletes, as coaches, that's what you want to do. And this is just another step in the football world of protecting your athletes. And we've been very, very pleased with the product. And you know, we're going to continue to use it into the future because of the results that we've had over the last two years. Just that added protection, especially, you know, in the in the hard times of preseason where you're going at high rates, a lot more hitting and physical practices. And we're very pleased with this product and, and we'll continue to use it. Our number of reported concussions in practice have been reduced year over year, and that could be a result of many things, but I certainly believe that the ProTech's been involved in that reduction. And also I think more importantly, our student athletes have talked about the day-to-day -day feeling after practice has improved for them. Just from the general contact in practice, that with wearing the ProTech that they felt better afterwards and not as cloudy or as dazed, if you will, as perhaps they were in the past. It's been very effective. Whenever you have a product that can reduce the propensity for injuries for a program, you got to take it seriously, and, and we do at Holy Cross. And so the technology, the testing that was behind it showing how the, the force was reduced to the head, we were immediately intrigued, and I think we were very quick to the decision that this was something we wanted to bring onto our program. We want to help our student athletes become the best they possibly can be, to reach their fullest potential as a student, as an athlete, and ultimately as a person. You know, we're in a success business and everything that we do is geared toward our student athletes becoming successful, not only in the short run, but in the long run. This is Friday Night Tykes. Early in the third quarter, Venom with the first down at the Storm 35. Come on, stop him, Storm! Oh, 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 that's a headshot, that's a headshot, that's a headshot. Hi! He's having a seizure! He's having a seizure! From okay? the sideline, as a coach, I was watching the play. Uh, we were on defense, and Eric was playing defensive end. I watched the play develop. They were running towards us. And then I see a kid come, kind of drop his helmet, lower the crown of his helmet, and launched into Eric's ear hole. Eric was pursuing, pursuing the quarterback as he went upfield, and uh, another child from the other team came back and, and blindsided him and gave him a, a lunge to the head with his head. And you know, immediately the crowd was like, oh, and you could just see people were scared because they knew that he had taken a significant hit from the boy. I saw him fly up, come up off the ground. It's a pretty devastating hit. And actually knocked him out cold for a couple seconds. It was a scary situation. Uh, we all went out on the field. Um, the child laid there and he couldn't open his eyes. Uh, I noticed the, the helmet, the Protec that was still on the helmet. I picked it up on the field and you could see where the uh, Eric got hit. He got hit right here on the side where the kids lunged up, did a helmet to helmet shot on him. And um, you can see that there was an indention actually in the Protec where, where it was hit and it was scuffed up a little bit because uh, it, was, it was a hard, hard hit. I know very well that had he not had that extra protection that he would not have done as well as he did with the injury. Without a doubt in my mind, um, had it not been for the Protec, I know he would have been a lot worse off than he was. When it came and hit, it reduced the force because it has like a memory foam. It's like putting an airbag on your helmet, really. Uh, but it reduces that force. And also that, it, the slickness of the, of the Protec 
probably glanced off. We ended up going to the trauma center. They took him down for his testing, and when they brought him back, they brought a, I don't remember who came into the room. One of the doctors, there was a whole team of doctors, but one of them came in there and said, I have no doubt him having this extra protection is gonna allow him to walk out of this hospital within 24 hours. I know that the Protect saved Eric from a very serious injury. So if I could tell, you know, one player, one parent, teams, coaches, anyone who's involved in football, um, you know, how much it helped prevent him from being, getting a very serious injury, it's well worth the price. And honestly, I was like, well, this is an extra cost on top of youth football. Um, but I quickly have realized uh, my kids will never play another day of football without it. There, there is not a price tag on this product that even if it saved one kid, the cost is low. I, I, I think the cost is low for what it does. I mean, you could probably get a pretty good sized hospital bill for what you're paying for a ProTech. And uh, I just think and think back and wonder, you know, what would have been different or what would have happened had we not had it. And I'm just uh, very thankful Eric was wearing it that day. Well, it's the time of year when college football games and the Super Bowl are on the top of all of our minds for millions of Americans. But the dangers of the game are also gaining attention since football and sports related concussions are on the rise. Now, a revolutionary technology may help reduce the risk of brain injury and decrease the danger in playing the popular sport. And joining us to discuss the topic of brain injury is former NFL player John Roman. John, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Nice to be here. This is actually something that's kind of close to your heart. You've played football, so have you experienced a concussion before or know plenty of players who have? A uh, quick answer is yes, and I will tell you that the, the game was much more violent when I played Annalee. Uh, I played when the head slap was legal, I played when the chop back block was legal, and uh, so I had my share of concussions. But during that time, uh, the way we thought about concussions, we said you're getting your bell rung. And um, later, and while I was playing, I worked on Wall Street and got my bell rung in a different way. But since 2005, concussions have actually tripled. And because of that, I was so worried about the future of football that I wanted to come back and really make a difference. And so that's why we're launching the ProCap to make the game safer. And it seems like every year you hear more and more kids actually want to jump on board and play football. So tell me about this technology, because it's not just the helmet. It's a shell. It's, it's a little bit hefty, but that's what it does. It protects your head, your brain, everything behind it. Well, well we're very excited about it because uh, most kids like things to look cool. And when you look at this helmet, and then place our product over it, you really can't see much difference. You're right, it looks the exact same. We were able to mimic the design of the original helmet, and what it's doing is it's absorbing and dissipating wherever the impact would occur. It has a slipperier surface than the actual helmet itself, so you can shed force upon contact, and it's actually designed to move slightly when it's hit, guiding the force away from the player's helmet. And finally, it has a chin strap attachment here that's covered so that in the heat of the game when an opposing player tries to rip the chin strap he cannot do that and he's protected with a cover. Now would that fit on most any standard helmet? Uh, we have uh, covers that are available for all the shut line and all the right L line mm -hmm. so and they control 90 percent of the marketplace so the quick answer is most of the helmets that, that the young men wear today we can cover with our cover. Let's, let's Take that off. I actually want to see inside what it looks like. So, okay, so it doesn't actually have the separate pads. Sometimes you'll see the ones where it has the spacer padding in there. Sure. This is all one solid piece. It's, it's, it's really um, a, a very straightforward but uh, deceivingly sophisticated product. It has Velcro attachments where you can see these indentations oh, yes. uh, that are placed to attach the actual cover to the helmet. And so uh, when you look at the helmet to your right, right in front of you, Annalee, mm -hmm. that's the helmet that I played with. Wow. And this is a classic, then? <laughs> it, it is a classic. It absolutely is. And if you, you look at see. the inside of that helmet there, you can see mm -hmm. 
how the inner shell technology was uh, not very sophisticated and why the guys that played during my era uh, were challenged in terms of head trauma and concussions. And if you look at today's helmets, you can see that the inner shell mm -hmm. technology is much more advanced. There's much more absorption occurring there. And that's why we believe that if the goal is to reduce head trauma for kids, that we should have the combination of both inner shell technology advancing and outer shell technology on the outside working in tandem to reduce trauma and ultimately concussions. It's the more the merrier. So moms and dads out there, when your little boy or little girl wants to get out on the field, there you go right there. They're going to be really protected. So we're going to have all this information because you guys are going to start rolling out products towards the end of the year. You can see right there several of the colors that are going to be offered as well. We're going to have all of this posted to AtlantaPluggedIn.com. All you have to do is head over there to get all the information. At Penn State University, extensive research is being internally funded to specifically focus on sports-related concussions. In 2015, Penn State teamed up with Head Health Network and in 2016 with ProTech Helmet Caps. Madeline Scaramuzzo and the athletic training staff monitored the impacts and collect valuable data from every practice and game day. The athletic training staff and researchers analyzed the data and have noticed a dramatic decrease in higher intensity submaximal impacts. For 25G hits, a daily average per player would get six hits in 2015. In 2017, we can come down and see that on a daily average per player, they're only receiving three hits in the 25G category. So we dropped the hits by half. We want to do the most we can to help our student athletes, and it's not just while they're here, it's for the future and we're going to try to lessen the impact that our kids are getting to their heads as much as we possibly can. On the day for Mims for 77 yards and that's second touchdown and while we're at it we're just going to talk about this real quick. If you take a look at the helmets each one of the helmets that Oak Park is wearing they are part of the defend your head program here that the TCYFL has established. It's kind of the new ProTech defend your head it's a helmet shield that actually goes over the top of the helmets if we could have our camera guys kind of close in on one of the Oak Park players here we can give it to you but it's kind of a, a seamless head attachment that goes right on top of the helmets and you can see it there and it's like a rubberized surface and they take and essentially clip it to the inside or inner shell of the helmet and Protex absorbs and reduces the defects caused by contact and created by contact and before it reaches the helmet, and whether it be consistent, you know, concussive blows, et cetera, and it's been tested in the lab in the field by over 100 youth and high school and college teams all over the country that are currently wearing these now. And Oak Park is the TCYFL's own test case. And so far, Oak Park has reported zero concussions this year. So clearly an improvement in the safety of the TCYFL and of youth football. And the keep by pass as he tries to cut it back. And get the one point conversion, and he is stopped. Yeah, right. and with 225 to go here. Well, with the situation that's going on today with the concussions and the greater awareness of the possible injuries that can happen long term, we sat down as a school, President Father Bongard, our trainer, Ken Eves, and myself, and we met a few times and determined that this is in the best interest of the health of the kids. And the parents are in love with it. The big thing is with the offensive and defensive linemen. Uh, our trainer met with me after one of the practices and he said the most impressive thing is with the constant contact that happens at each snap of the ball, he, he did not hear one helmet clang together. Because of the cushion of it, it allowed, even though there was contact, there wasn't that severe constant pounding contact. I would recommend Protect to every high school program. The reason St. Agnes chose this product was because with concussions as prevalent as they are in sports, we wanted to get something to give the added protection to our kids. We wanted to get the top of the line product and ProTech is that, is that product. Absolutely wonderful feedback from the parents, uh, completely embraced. In fact, a lot of the parents, as distant as they can be, were not really aware that the kids had them. When they came down, they were awestruck by how they looked seamless regular helmets, and I had uh, just fell in love with the caps. St. Agnes has always been uh, concussion aware. Absolutely, these things across the board, uh, even the hitting the day-to-day, -day, absolutely have provided uh, tremendous protection. Tremendous product, 
We would recommend ProTech to other youth programs we have, and we will continue to do so. and well-being of our student athletes is paramount. So I certainly want to invest in products that deliver that because at the end of the day, we want them to achieve as much as they can in their chosen sport, and in this case, football, because we do truly believe it complements the great education they receive here. But at the end of their careers, whether that be here at Holy Cross or if they have professional opportunities after, their sport will end and their participation will end. And they're gonna leave here with a great education that we want them to be able to use. So protecting their well-being and making sure that the benefits they receive from athletic participation 
and the education they receive position them well for success in the future is our most critical goal and that's why we want to invest in that. Whenever you have a product that can reduce the propensity for injuries for a program, you got to take it seriously, and, and we do at Holy Cross. And so the technology, the testing that was behind it showing how the, the force was reduced to the head, we were immediately intrigued, and I think we were very quick to the decision that this was something we wanted to bring onto our program. ProTech was the first one to perfect the attachment system to keep the covers on the helmets and not have them falling off consistently. It's a very secure attachment and it's helped our players feel better and obviously helped them perform better. Well, it has been a big topic of discussion in the sports world, the dangers of concussions, especially in football. Experts say excessive hard hits to the head could lead to brain injuries. In 2005, around 55,000 concussions were reported from football games in practice. By 2012, that number had more than tripled. But new technology is working to make that sport even safer. And joining us to discuss football and brain injuries, former NFL player John Roman in town for the American Football Coaches Association Convention. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And you helped guard Joe Namath, let's just say that, and did a fine job, I might add, you said. Well, I like to say he did a fine <laughs> job, but I think he was sacked a few times. He was sacked career. a few times. <laughs> well, then you took some of these hits. Was this out of personal, I guess, experience that you decided to get involved with this? What led you to this? Thank you. Honestly, it's a crusade. It's 24-7 it's for me. I want to give back. All the statistics that you're reading about, uh, 3.8 million traumatic brain injuries are being diagnosed each year. More alarming, another 30% that go undiagnosed. I'm concerned about the future of football. I wanted to make a difference, and so that's why we're launching this product. And we're going to talk about that product. One thing, I don't want to give football the, on the only bad rap when it comes to that. My kids right. play lacrosse. Mm -hmm. We talked about women. You said per capita was female ice hockey? That's correct. Well, another way to look at it is, is that concussions are not a boy's issue. They're not a girl's issue. They're not a football issue. They're a contact sports issue. So keep that in mind. This isn't just football. Mm -hmm. You've brought a helmet here. This is the helmet that we think of. They have fixed padding on the inside to make that better. They you do. say not enough. Uh, I love what the helmet manufacturers are doing inside the helmet. The, inner, the, inner, the inner shell technology is terrific. The concern I have is the exterior shell. That hard, hard that surface. That hard surface that is not properly managing the impact of collision. And so that's why we've developed this particular cover that you'll Goes see. Goes right on top. Fits on top and mimics the same shape. Softer. It's softer wherever the impact occurs outside of the helmet. It will absorb. You can almost take a finger test and see the way that it absorbs the hit. Uh, it's actually slipperier than the exterior hard shell. And you said this is only weighs a pound, so players would not feel a lot with it as, well, as they, far as the weight or anything they, along those lines. They won't even know the cover is on their head. And then you're hoping that this, that more and more teams, I guess, start using it. But at the very least, just to begin that discussion and figure what we can do better to help. Well, well, you're right. It's it's uh, it's a growing concern, uh, not only uh, among those that are proponents and supporters of football, but participation rates Absolutely. at the youth level, as you know, are are declining. And I love this game. It, it has taught such great team values and things that um, I think carry over in a corporate America and whatever someone's career thank may be. Thank you. Protect the game, protect the head first. All right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And we want to let you know, if you want more information on this, on the pro cap and defend your head, we have you linked up at whas11.com. At Penn State University, extensive research is being internally funded to specifically focus on sports-related concussions. In 2015, Penn State teamed up with Head Health Network and in 2016 with ProTech Helmet Caps. 
Madeline Scaramuzzo and the athletic training staff monitor the impacts and collect valuable data from every practice and game day. The athletic training staff and researchers analyze the data and have noticed a dramatic decrease in higher intensity submaximal impacts. For 25G hits, a daily average per player would get six hits in 2015. In 2017, we can come down and see that on a daily average per player, they're only receiving three hits in the 25G category. So we drop the hits by half. We want to do the most we can to help our student athletes, and it's not just while they're here, it's for the future. And we're going to try to lessen the impact that our kids are getting to their heads as much as we possibly can. The biggest objection we get with football in many contact sports is safety. And we wanted to make sure that we had the safest program in Philadelphia. So we went out and we, we researched a lot of different things. My son Zachary uh, plays running back for Our Lady of Calvary. I asked him about what he thought about the Pro Tech and he told me he immediately felt a difference upon taking a hit. The feedback from the parents was positive in that you're doing anything to be proactive. We want to protect the players. Our experience was that there wasn't as many headaches as I might have thought there would have been in the beginning. One of the things when we said we were going to keep the kids safe, that was our paramount. I treat these kids like they're my own sons and we just know that the impact that the helmets have on each other was something that was causing some issues. I like the technology. I think that it almost goes back to the days of the leather helmets. Um, it softens the blow. Got positive feedback from the players. The concerns were when you put anything on the head that maybe it weighs a little bit more. There were no issues with that whatsoever from any of the players. In fact, some of the players actually commented to me that they didn't even notice the difference. We had zero concussions in our program this year, none documented through any medical doctors, and even though we sent the kids in. Uh, we've talked to several of the kids on the team, uh, some of the kids that play running back and some of the other positions that take a lot of hits. And I'm going to tell you what, we haven't had a lot of complaints of headaches. I'm very, very happy that Calvary, you know, invested in ProTech. And uh, to be honest with you, I think it's the wave of the future. Everybody should go in that direction. You know what? It definitely made a difference with our kids. And it gives us the confidence when we go out there, hopefully some of the other programs will get on board with it. I mean, our kids are protected. We want all the kids in the league to be protected. Our results seem to be positive so far. Based on my experience, I think that the biggest impact is going to be with our linemen. When we look at the, the number of uh, sub-concussive hits that are repeated day in and day out in practice and in games, I think that's where we'll see uh, hopefully a big reduction in uh, headaches and then uh, just other sub-concussive symptoms, if you will. Especially now that we're thinking it's more of a cumulative effect as opposed to the one big blow. Based on our limited usage of it so far, I would definitely recommend the ProTech for other teams. I was excited that the team was bringing something to our boys to make them feel safe right from the get-go. I certainly would recommend it to any program, probably for any sport that needs a helmet because I feel like our kids are, you know, young, they're seventh grade right now. Any protection that we can have on their head, it seems like every sport these days is so physical. I was concerned that it was going to be a little bit bulky and different on their head when, you know, my son went to put it on, but what I came to find out that he feels like it doesn't even have any different feel on his head and he just, you know, likes the way it is. And I know as a parent that it's so much safer, so it felt like a win-win. With youth football going on these days, we're trying to be as safe as we can in every aspect. In addition to obviously providing the added protection, it also, I think, opens the door to more people that are on the fence with all the uh, injury risks. It's just one more uh, opportunity to show that you're uh, providing every safety measure possible, making the safest game as possible. We've had no concussion. You know, it, we, we monitor that very closely, obviously, and uh, you know, it, it's it's been a, you know, we four weeks into the season, we haven't had one yet, so we're. I'd say it's been a huge improvement. Uh, it's interesting that the, the, the uh, parents actually complained uh, a week after we had them on, wondering when we were going to get the new caps. And uh, it's kind of a nice compliment to your product in that uh, they were on for a week and they, so a few of the parents didn't even know that they were on. 
uh, and, and the players ha have uh, realized no difference in weight or, I mean, it's a very, very small weight uh, add-on, so it's, all around it's been a great product. It's a great practice tool when you think about it, especially with certain position groups. You know, you're doing certain things because you're trying to rep things out so you perfect your technique. So you're trying to rep things out in practice and there's a lot of incidental contact. Even if it's not a contact drill, the times that this comes into play are you know, incalculable. There's so many times, even in, in drill work or even hitting a sled, that this could help reduce the impact it could have on our players. Here's a question for you. How can technology lower the risk of brain injuries among football players at all ages? Joining us now live from Atlanta is Dr. Marla Shapiro from the Concussion Institute and Gwinnett Medical Center in Georgia, as well as former New York Jets offensive lineman John Roman. Welcome to both of you. Good morning, Dina. Good morning, Dina. Happy to be here. John, let's talk about your head. First of all, how many concussions did you suffer when you were playing the game and how did it affect you? Well, I can tell you that I've had more than three, and no pun intended, but I'm not sure that I remember the others. Mm. Uh, it was a very different game when I played. Uh, a lot more violent, I can tell you that, Dina. So, Dodger, when we talk about, we're, we have this new awareness of concussions, and we're still learning more, I think, all the time. But tell us, what do we know now about concussions as far as, it, and we're talking from the, the little guys to, to the grown-ups, uh, their long-term effects. That's a great question, and I think you're absolutely right, Dina. We are still learning. There's, a, there's more that we know now than we did probably when John played, and there's still yet that we, we have to discover about long-term consequences. We do know, however, and can say with some certainty that the more you have, the greater the risk for adverse long-term consequences. But our greatest concerns, especially for kids and teenagers, is when they continue to play with concussions, particularly when they're re-injured before they recovered from the last concussion. Those are the folks that are at the greatest risk for long-term and even catastrophic brain injuries. But the problem with these concussions, doctor, and correct me if I'm wrong, and John, you chime in too, is that it's not a physical, it's not a bruise that you can see and say, okay, that's healed, the scab has fallen off, you're good, go back in the game. I mean, there's all this neurological testing that needs to be done to figure out when the concussion is healed, right? That's absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's not, there is no one gold standard test, but I do think we have good tools for diagnosing and managing fairly reliably. The challenge is that it's based on symptoms. You know, the, the concussion causes a, an energy crisis in the brain that causes a physical, cognitive, you know, sleep-related sorts of symptoms that athletes experience. And there is, you know, how do you measure, do they really have a headache or not? So that is the challenge, but, but the more we can educate, the more we can help to change the culture so that folks feel that, you know, understand the importance of being straightforward, the better uh, and more accurately we can determine when they are recovered and can safely return. All right, we talk about yeah, changing Dina, the culture, John. Yeah, go ahead. Let's talk about this. I know you want to talk about technology. Yeah, I, I want to, I, sure. I wanted to compliment uh, uh, Dr. Marla's observations because we truly do need to do more in terms of breaking down the culture. It's, it's, it's okay to sit out uh, a period of time if you're exhibiting concussion type symptoms. Uh, years ago when I played, uh, you literally uh, could be concussed and be back in playing the game right away. And, and we all know now that that certainly wasn't the best practice to take with regard to treatment of concussions. Right, you're told to so, walk it off and get back uh, in I the do, game. Uh, you bet, you bet. Uh, when we talk about the technology, John, just mentioned, so this ProCap, um, and I know it's a tough sell with many um, traditionalists, but um, you're talking about adding a layer on top of a helmet that might help prevent concussions, right? We are, and we're very excited about this unique uh, product, and we do believe it's revolutionary because uh, outer shell technology is a technology that's um, starting to get some traction out in the marketplace right now. And I think people are beginning to realize, uh, Dina, that hard shell exterior surfaces are not the best way to manage uh, and or absorb impact. 
And so we believe that the Pro Cap, which is a half inch thick, uh, specially formulated cover to, you know, uh, absorb the impact wherever it occurs over the helmet. It's a slipperier surface, by the way, than the actual helmet, so it makes blows more glancing. Mm. Uh, and it has other safety attributes in terms of its ability to guide the high end of the force away from the helmet and ultimately the player's brain. So uh, I do think that the combination of a product like ours, the Pro Cap, in tandem with the great work that's being done by the helmet manufacturers in terms of inner shell technology is the right approach to take in terms of keeping our players safer in the game. All right, John, we got to go. Thank you so much for your time this morning. John and Dr. Shapiro, uh, the key is getting players to put that Pro Cap on. That's a whole nother battle that we don't have time to get into. At Penn State University, extensive research is being internally funded to specifically focus on sports-related concussions. In 2015, Penn State teamed up with Head Health Network and in 2016 with ProTech Helmet Caps. Madeline Scaramuzzo and the athletic training staff monitored the impacts and collect valuable data from every practice and game day. The athletic training staff and researchers analyzed the data and have noticed a dramatic decrease in higher intensity submaximal impacts. For 25G hits, a daily average per player would get six hits in 2015. In 2017, we can come down and see that on a daily average per player, they're only receiving three hits in the 25G category. So we dropped the hits by half. We want to do the most we can to help our student athletes, and it's not just while they're here, it's for the future and we're gonna to try to lessen the impact that our kids are getting to their heads as much as we possibly can.